Hi, I'm Ole Holm Nielsen. I'm uh, presenting this talk, Pathfinding into the Clouds, at the Slum User Group Meeting 2022. Um, during this presentation, I will make uh, references to a web page, which you can see here uh, on the front page. Uh, you might uh, want to have this page uh, handy during the presentation if you want to check out the sections of this page and some of the links uh, in there. Now, pathfinding is the plotting by a computer application, the shortest route between two points. And we have here at the bottom uh, our on-premise location, the, our local slum cluster. Above us are the huge clouds looming over us, and we are looking for a route uh, here uh, that is going somewhere, hopefully into the clouds. We are going to explore that in this presentation. The concept of scaling an on-premise cluster into the clouds is interesting because um, uh, a number of use cases, examples of which would be to extend uh, your cluster on demand uh, with compute nodes that are actually in the cloud. Uh, this gives you uh, a number of different uh, possibilities. Uh, for example, uh, that you can uh, gain access to other types of CPUs that than uh, what you have on premise so that you don't need to buy them. And similarly, you can gain access to uh, GPUs and other types of accelerators uh, instead of buying them. Uh, you might not be able to explore those types of hardware uh, all of the time, so it may actually be cheaper to uh, buy access to these types of hardware in the cloud. Now, the outline of this talk is, first of all, that I've been working with the Azure Cloud Service, and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. There are other excellent cloud providers out there, of course. The steps that I've been going through and that I'm going to report here is firstly to open an account at the uh, Azure uh, cloud service provider uh, in a portal. Uh, this is what I've been using. You can also use a command line interface. Uh, in the cloud, you create some virtual machines. Uh, VMs uh, and a corresponding virtual network, which uh, Azure calls a VNet. And this is what you're going to be working with. Now, once that has been set up, you create a VPN tunnel uh, using IPsec encryption between your on premise subnet and the cloud virtual net. So once you've established a TCP IP communication through this uh, VPN tunnel, now it is time to uh, make some scripts that can power up and down uh, your VMs on demand. This is the Slurm's cloud bursting concept. In order for it to be useful, you need some storage space uh, accessible to the cloud VMs. And uh, you uh, might want to keep your storage uh, in the cloud, both for application software and user data, rather than copying data back and forth uh, between on-premise and cloud. First step is to open an account uh, with your cloud service provider. So since I'm using the Azure uh, cloud service, I have uh, been fortunate enough to receive a significant amount of guidance from Azure experts in the Copenhagen, Denmark area. And I'm very grateful for that. So many organizations such as our university uh, do have all as a central IT Azure subscription for whatever purposes. And for me, it was a simple task to ask uh, our central IT people to create an Azure account which we could use. You can also open an Azure account yourself and pay for it. The details are in the link shown here. So once you have logged into your uh, portal to the cloud service, you need first to create a virtual network where 
all your uh, uh, servers and so on are going to live. And the creation of a VNet is documented in this uh, link with a number of links to the Azure documentation. And uh, here in this oval here, you have three VMs, the VM, uh, some group here and a network interface which has a, an IP address that lives in the VNet. And all of that comprises the VM subnet. You have another uh, subnet, uh, the VPN gateway subnet, where you have the gateway and a tunnel uh, defined in Azure, which communicates uh, through this IPsec tunnel with the uh, corresponding VPN gateway on the on-premise subnet. And all of this is uh, an entity in Azure, which I have called Azure HPC. Uh, you choose these names yourself. So creation of a virtual machine, uh, you need to start somewhere and uh, you can look at, at this uh, link here for some suggestions. Uh, basically, you uh, take a pre-configured uh, uh, virtual machine and then you customize it. So uh, the good thing is for Alma Linux uh, clone of Red Hat 8, uh, there are some freely available images uh, in Azure that you can start with. There are also some Rocky Linux images. They are only available for pay. Uh, so maybe there's going to be free uh, Rocky Linux images in the future. We'll see. When you are creating the uh, VM, you very importantly need to record the secure shell public key for the VM because you are later going to need it when you log into the VM via the v VPN tunnel. Oh, and a uh, caution about economy. You should uh, remember to shut down VMs when you're not using them. A good example would be to shut down uh, all your VMs automatically by the end of the day, which Azure permits. Uh, now you create uh, an on-premise IPsec gateway, which is going to communicate with the cloud service Azure. This part of the adventure is the least documented uh, part at all and which has uh, taken me the most time to work out. So uh, at this link here, you can see how to create a site to site, that is subnet to subnet uh, VPN connections between on-premise and Azure. Now, <clears throat> Azure does support a number of compatible hardware router devices uh, from Cisco, Juniper, and a number of other uh, router uh, hardware devices. Uh, and uh, Azure also uh, gives links to the vendor's configuration guides. That's all fine and dandy, but what if you don't have the money to buy such an expensive router and or Um, so, such a tunnel, as you can see conceptually here, well, no humans uh, or bicycles are allowed to enter. That's what you're going to do. Um, however, you really need to be very observant about strange problems that are lurking in these tunnels. For example, I've had the experience of meeting sulking reindeer when entering a tunnel. So, beware. The solution is uh, to use LibreOne, a free software implementation of the most widely supported and standardized VPN protocol, which uses IPsec, uh, sorry, and Internet Key Exchange, IKE. So you can take any old Linux server which you have. It doesn't have to be very highly performant. Um, I took. A 10 year old server with two NICs. One NIC is uh, on the uh, on premise uh, 
cluster subnet and the uh, other NIC uh, will be facing the public internet and connecting to Azure. So the good thing about Libros 1 is that it's actually included in Red Rel 8 and the clones. There are a lot of web pages that, uh, that uh, give instructions for setting up a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. I've Googled, uh, I've tried a lot of these methods and I've never found any method that actually works. Now, this may be specific to uh, EL8 uh, operating system and uh, Libos 144 or Azure, I don't know, but really there is nothing out there that worked for me. And furthermore, Azure uh, doesn't really support uh, this software-based Libos 1 VPN tunnel, so don't create a support case with them. Nevertheless, I have found that it works and I'm going to describe how. So. The details you can find in this uh, other web page here, how to set up Libros 1, how to configure the firewall both from your uh, cluster network and into the internet, uh, and also the firewall in your uh, VPN gateway, how to set up IPsec, how to set up uh, IP routing from your servers and compute nodes in the cluster subnet. It's uh, described in this page. And as an example here is an IPsec configuration file. Uh, and, and these are the crucial things that uh, made I, uh, Libos 1 work for me. So first of all, you need to define the IP addresses and subnets of your on-premise net and on the Azure net. These are just example IPs. And then comes the crucial uh, IPsec configuration parameters like user shared secret, make sure to start IPsec when you reboot the server, uh, restart the connection if it if it dies, um, and here's the encryptions that you're going to use and renegotiate. You want perfect, perfect forward secrecy, uh, another algorithm here for this ESP, and uh, so on. These are crucial things and then it actually works. Now, how do you integrate uh, the cloud VM nodes with your on-premise cluster? Well, at this point, your on-premise cluster subnet uh, IP addresses can communicate directly using TCP IP with a, through the Libros 1 IPsec router and uh, to uh, VMs in Azure. You can, for example, make an SSH connection uh, to a VM in Azure and uh, log in there and then the recommendation is follow your usual on-premise node configuration uh, procedures install your applications uh, configure users whatnot uh, my choice uh, which is not necessarily what you want to do is to use ansible for node configuration and i have some notes about exactly how to to use ansible with with the azure vms and for user authentication i would say configure users in the vms as you would normally do in any of your on-premise cluster nodes in my case i would just add users to the etc password file now, when you have a VM uh, in Azure that you think really does everything you want, it's, uh, you know, it has Slurm, it uh, will be able to, to run uh, jobs and so on, then you can clone as many copies as you like in Azure of this working uh, VM, store it as an image as described in this Azure documentation page. Next step is to write uh, scripts to uh, for Slurm, uh, the Slurm controller to power up and power down the VMs. And uh, for this, I would refer to the excellent Slurm power saving guide, um, which is also referred to in the Slurm uh, cloud uh, bursting guide. Um, and you need to write some scripts that are specific to the cloud service that you are using. And you can see this page here. Um, I wrote some not too sophisticated scripts for powering up and down Azure VMs, uh, actually whole lists of, of uh, VMs in one shot. And uh, I find that quite handy for Azure. We should develop uh, such scripts also for other uh, cloud providers. 
And the good thing is about these uh, power up, power down scripts is that you don't need Slurm actually to use them. You can just fire up the uh, Azure VMs and so on and uh, log in and, and work and, 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 and debug things. You need some storage uh, in the cloud service. And uh, very recently in February 2022, Azure has started to offer a network file system version three storage blobs, uh, not these uh, very sophisticated, very high performance storage options, but just fairly simple and fairly inexpensive storage uh, solutions. And you can see here uh, the Azure documentation for this. So what we are gaining from this is that we have a Linux file system compatibility in an object storage in Azure. And this means that any Linux client can mount a storage container in the blob storage from any uh, of your own uh, Azure virtual machines. But importantly, your on-premise computers can mount it as well using the VPN IPsec tunnel. If you have IP a TCP IP connection through the VPN tunnel, you can ping and you can NFS mount uh, these Azure uh, storage blobs from on-premise servers and compute nodes. You could possibly use that for uh, copying data, uh, you know, staging data uh, from uh, on-premise to the cloud and, and copying back data afterwards. And uh, anyhow, it's extremely useful. Uh, and uh, how you set up an Azure storage account is uh, detailed in this uh, wiki page. So as I said, uh, the NFS mount works both inside your Azure VMs and also uh, within the uh, your on-premise servers. And I have actually chosen to set up an NFS auto mounter just as I always do with any kind of on-premise servers, NFS auto mounting the Azure storage and it works just great. And uh, I think uh, that you also need to create user home directories in the Azure storage so that you don't, uh, that, so that uh, user jobs don't use your on-premise home directories, but they would have like a remote home directory in Azure. So that's basically the end of the story. I hope uh, you have found this. Uh, useful and uh, that it may work uh, for others as well. So I'm going to stop the recording here.